Hi guys, good to have you all back. It is Monday. Hope you all had a fantastic weekend. I have a new idea for a project. Um, something that I've never done before. Also, I did not see any tutorial on this. So it's going to be an experiment slash adventure. So let me tell you a little bit about my idea and show you sort of the inspiration for this project. This is where the inspiration came from. Now, guys, I've, try I've tried to Google the translation for these things. Um, in Dutch, it is uh, kleurenwaaier. Uh, but you can also translate it to uh, swatch block or color fan or something like it. Well, something like this, yes, where you see all the color swatches and what have you. This is a very old one. This is from the, from the 70s. Love it. <laughs> I absolutely love it. I, just for keepsake. Just for keepsake. But I also have these two. Now, these are the sort of the same principle. It's like a fan idea. Yeah. With sort of a construction that will keep everything together. Now, this is with um, animals and flowers and such. And you can flip it over. And there's more on the back. Just some lovely images with some, you know information about it also have this one that closes uh, sort of on the bottom corner look at those yeah very lovely right yes so i have these i could take them apart and do something with the lovely cards that was the idea uh but i'm not going to so what is it that i want to do i want to make one sort of so i'm going to make sort of a fan with uh, lovely cards i think i'm yeah i'm going to go botanical I want to make lovely cards and put them together with sort of a construction that holds them all together. So that you can sort of fan them out and use it as sort of a journal. Because on the backs of these ones there's some information. But I think I want to have some sort of plain paper on them so you can journal on them. On your walks in nature or, or what have you. Right? Okay, so I'm going to make sort of fans. Fans, botanical fans. I have no clue, guys, how you call these. If you do, let me know in the comments. So, um, I I don't know really what I'm going to use, but I have some stuff out. Let me show you the supplies that I think I might be using for this project. For papers, um, you can use cardstock or what have you. Just a little bit sturdier paper. I'm going to use less love scrapbook paper. Yes, for just a base. Now, I'm going to do lots of decorating on the front, of course. But on the backs, I'm just using plain... This is sketchbook paper, whatever. Uh, just some plain paper. But you could use coffee dyed paper or lined paper or what have you. Just on the, on the back so that you can doodle on them or what have you. Now, for the front. Yes. I have some lovely books out. Use scraps, guys. Use whatever you want. Now, I'm going to make these botanical. But do this in any sort of theme that you want. Maybe you're into frogs or, I don't know, bicycle bells or doorknobs. Whatever tickles your fancy, guys. Just do you do you. But I'm going to do some uh, botanicals because, you know, I just like them. Um, I'm going to use some old book pages. This is an old encyclopedia thingy. Uh, and I love the paper. and has sort of columns with... You know stuff on it so some lovely old paper um and i have this one it's a very old well not a very old it's from 1951 like an encyclopedia for uh, botanicals with these sort of pictures on them aren't these lovely so i might use some of some of these uh but also i am going to use some color on this so i've taken out some of my uh, books that I can use for fuzzy cutting or whatever with lovely botanical images on them. Yeah, so I have this one. I have um, this one. Oh, this is lovely. This lovely matte paper. I might use this one. This is from Musso, one of my favorites. Something with herbs and that also has the um, black and white drawing. So you can use the black and white drawings as well or some colored ones. And I also have this one. So these are just some of the books that I have. But maybe you have the British Concise Flora, whatever. Uh, that is a very lovely one to have. So some images of um, botanicals. That's what I'm using. I'll be using bits and bobs for decorating. Uh, which means some labels. I'm not going to use poster stamps on this, guys. Um, but I am going to use some labels. Now, I have loads. I love Michelle's labels, but I also have a lot of these left. Now, these are from Tracy Fox. She's love junk journals on um, 
Etsy. And there's some sort of field notes type of uh, labels in here that I really want to use up. And also she has some of these. I'm not linking this, guys. I am sorry. Um, but go um, look her up. Yes, yes, field label. And um, I'm going to use these because these are actually labels with some botanical images in them on them. Yeah, she has these uh, sort of sepia ones, but also some colored ones. So I'm going to use some labels as well. Yeah, so that's it for paper. Now for the tools, let me show you. Because I'm using the 12 by 12 scrapbook paper, I, I've taken out my big paper trimmer, but you don't need it, guys. Just, you know, ruler knife or scissors, scissors, glue, I might use art or just glue stick. I'll probably do some sort of splatter stamping, <laughs> yeah, or distressing or whatever you. Uh, I'm very much into freight burlap at the moment, so I love this. I... I will probably use some uh, hole reinforcers. Now, I have some tins that are uh, already made. But you can make some yourself, guys. Um, no worries. I might make them myself because I want a little bit of a bigger size. Don't know yet, guys. So I have my three-quarter inch uh, circle punch and then a small circle punch to make them myself. Also, now, for the closure thingy. Yes, these are sort of screws with i don't know i don't know guys i've never taken one apart part because i just love them and this is just with a tie wrap thingy in here and this is also a screw thingy device now um i have thought about these options the the sort of quickest easiest way is just to use a piece of string just you know put it through there and then tie it uh, maybe you have uh, one of these rings, these binder rings, yeah, or a smaller one. You can use this, uh, or maybe you have a brad. I I think I'm going to use the brad option. I don't know for sure yet. Um, I have these are very old, these a tall ones, so it will hold a lot of paper. But I, actually, I don't know how many how many of these sort of things I'm going to make. Um, I've bought these years ago on AliExpress. It's sort of for a keychain or whatever you... It's sort of a device that you put in here and then you can close up and... Yeah, like a metal chain thingy. And these I bought years ago from a friend of mine on Instagram. And you just sort of push it in and then close it up like so. Yes, I'm not going to do it because once you, once you push it in, it is closed. So maybe have something like this. I don't know. Um, what else? I think that's it, guys. But, you know, once I get going, I might take out the other bits and bobs. Let's just see. Okay, I'm going to start with the bases. You can make this, guys, in any size. Because, see, different sizes in here. But I think uh, because I'm using the 12 by 12 that I have sort of a size in mind. The measurements, guys, you can you can already tell these are different uh, sizes. This is actually a 2 by 6, 2 by 6 inches. This is 2.5 by 7. And this is 3.25 by 3.25 by 6.25. So you can make them in any size that you want, loves. Yeah, you do you. Uh, because I have a 12 by 12. I am going to cut it in half, so it's going to be 6 tall, 6 and 6, yes, it's 12, and I'm going to divide this in uh, 3. So mine are going to be 3 by 6, which means I can make 8, I can make 8. First off, I'm going to cut it in half, at 6, there you go, using my very favorite trimmer, not. Uh, it's a good trimmer, guys, um, for these sort of cuttings, but... If you want to do something more precise, this is not your trimmer. It's sort of made to cut through all sorts of materials. But I mostly just use paper or cardstock or, you know, scrapbook paper. Yeah, so I'm, and then I'm going to cut them in three, which means I have eight of them. I will have eight. Two... Now, if you're not uh, if you're not going to use um, scrapbook paper, just some normal cardstock or something, whatever. Just as long, guys, because that is very important. Um, just as long if they have the same size. Yes, they need to line up. Already know something that I have not shown you yet. Corner rounded. Yes, rounded corners. 
Hello, corner rounder. Okay, so I'm not going to round the corners just yet, guys. I'm going to decorate them first, and then I'm going to round the corners. So if you're using 12 by 12, you'll have eight. Cut it in half at six, and then make cards that are three by six. Look at my sad little pile. <laughs> yes, look, these are much heavier, much thicker. So if you really want to do something, make more, make more. But I'm going to cover the front and the back, so it will be a little bit thicker. So let's let's just see how far we'll get, guys. But you know, make about twenty of them, or you know, how many, how many you want. For this video, I'm just going to limit myself to these eight. Now, I've picked this book. I'm going to make them all from the same book uh, because I want them to be a little bit similar. Now, as for uh, the decorating, I was thinking, um, well, you can do it any way you like, guys. Just have a picture on the top and then some sort of information on the bottom or what have you. I think I want to have a picture like over here. Yeah. And I'm going to use one and a half inch. So my images are going to be one and a half inch and about four, I guess. One and a half inch by four. And I'm going to do some other decorating with the other papers as well. Yeah. So which means I'm going to need, well, uh, what's this eight? Eight images that are one and a half inch by four. Now, what you could do if you want to is just fuzzy cut them. I'm not going to fuzzy cut them. I'm just going to cut them out. Let's see. Let's take out some. Now, for instance, here. Yeah. I'll probably use this image. So I've taken out my ruler. Yes. And I put it at one and a half inch. And just going to have a look. Will that work? Yes, it will fit in here. So that's how I'm going to do it, guys. But uh, absolutely, you do you, of course. Yeah. So I'm going to take out a couple of sort of images. Like this one over here. Yeah, so no fuzzy cutting, just cutting out some images. So, and that's what I'll be doing. See? Oh yeah, that'll look, look lovely. So eight lovely images. Or make them into a square, guys, or any, any shape that you want. Let me cut some of these out. So I've cut out a couple of these images. Love them. And also torn out a couple of, of these uh, sort of uh, old book pages. Now, as you can see, <laughs> yes, these are much whiter and brighter than these ones so i will sort of age them up a little bit with um my tea dye and a brush so i will sort of ink them and also i really like these to stand out a little bit so here's my plan i've taken out a piece of cardstock now this can be any color you want guys craft colored cardstock black orange i'm taking out green because of botanicals yes so I will distress them a little bit. Let me show you one. Yep. Because I just want to have a little bit of a border all around. So not too heavy. Just to take off a little bit of the white lovies. Also, this is sort of glossy paper. So the ink is not taking well. See? Ta-da! Yes, we muted it a little bit. And then, see, now it looks more like it's from the same sort of page. Let's just see. I'm going to do art glitter glue for this. Well, used to be art glitter glue. <laughs> glue formerly known as art. <laughs> I'm going to put some on. Put it in the corner. I'm going to have the tiniest border. Like uh, two millimeters. See? There. Yeah. And then I'm going to cut it out. Now this you can definitely not do with the Tim Holtz big paper trimmer. This is also Tim Holtz, guys. Yes, a tonic. Was it by Tim Holtz? I don't even know. That is too much. Too much. Yes, better. The bottom strip. See? Just a little bit of a border all around. So that it will stand out against... Um, 
this paper. Oh, yes, love it. See, I'm going to cover up the cat, guys. Yeah. So, I'm going to do that with all of them. Yes? Did I make a mistake? Yes, I did. Also want to add I also want to add some distressing on the edges, see? Yes. Also want to do some distressing. So, age them up. Age them up. They already look completely different. I really like them and I think they'll look lovely on on the paper. Now, I had some pieces left, some cutoffs. Um, I might use this. I might use this. I don't know yet, guys. Let's just see. You know, it is an experiment. We are experimenting. and it is an adventure. Now, these are the cards. Um, I think I'm just going to cover the whole bit with the dictionary. Yes. And then put other stuff on. However, I will um, cut this straight. Does this fit in here? No, it doesn't, but that's okay. I'm just going to take a piece off here. There we go. I will leave a little bit of blank space. I'm not going to cut all the way to the, to the letters, where the letters are starting. Just like so. Do we want to have this on the top? Yes. Why not? Why not? So I'm just going to glue it on. Uh, how am I going to do this? I'm just going to put glue here. Glue there. And then glue it on. Doesn't really matter uh, which side. Now, if you have very thin paper, if you're using very uh, thin dictionary, guys, um, try it out before you glue it on. Because you might see the print of the uh, scrapbook paper through it. So Be sure you don't see it. Okay. Oh, look at the lovely owl. Do not look at the back. No. So I'm just going to line it up here. And hopefully here. Yes. Yes. Now I can take out my paper trimmer again. Or do it with a ruler and a knife, guys. Oh, I'm going to cut straight through the owl. I am so sorry. Ooh. -hoo. And that'll make for a lovely scrap. Well, at least I didn't cut the cat. Otherwise, I'd be upset all day. <laughs> yes. So, here's what I'm going to do with all eight of them. Just cover them with a dictionary, guys. Or with any paper you, or paper you want. This is a very old sort of encyclopedia. As long as it doesn't have big... Images on them. Just letters in columns. Or do numbers. Or do whatever. Surprise me. Let me do all of these. So I have my lovely images. I have my cards. Guys, what I did, I backed all of them. With just writing paper, yeah? It's a little bit see-through, but it was just a line. Can you see it? It was just a line on the back. I don't mind this at all. Yeah. So I'm, I'm going to take one out. Um, we need to make a decision. Where are we going to sort of... Put them all together. I think I'm going to put it at the left hand um, top corner. Yeah. So they're going to be sort of flipping here. Uh, so I'm not going to put this here, of course. I think I'm going to put these here in this corner. Yeah. But I also want to I want to do a little bit of a collage, of course. Let's just you know, take out some images. And I want to put some sort of a black and white image on the bottom as well. I'm just going to use this. Probably. See? More lovely images. Oh yeah. I'm just going to do this. Oh that looks cute. Let's try to rip it straight. that have this sort of here on the bottom yes this here and this here do we want this on a piece of paper as well no but i am going to ink it i will ink it 
And there's going to be labels as well, guys. Question is, do we want some background splattering on this? I think so. But in a very light color. Oh, yeah. See, now it stands out. Yes, in a very light color. So I'm thinking tea dye. Tea dye. I need a piece of... Oh, I have some here. Paper in the back. Yeah. Now, I will ink all around it. But first, um, I want to put stuff on round corners and then ink all around it. Still a little bit of ground espresso on this or something like it. Oh yeah, that looks lovely. Yeah? Okay. This goes here. This goes here. And then labels. So I have all these labels, guys. That I do want to do something with. But first what I'm going to do is... Um, cut out a lot of these images. I have, a, I have one more here. Yeah, just, you know, a black and white... Botanical image. Have it sort of straight. And then ink them. So they will stand out a little bit. Yeah. And do some background distressing with splatter stamp. See, let's have another card. Put here a card here. Is that upside down? No, it's not upside down, love. And then this goes here. Great. So I need to tear eight of these and ink all around them. I have my base. I have my image. I have this. Now I want to add some um, labels. And also, um, keep in mind, this is going to be sort of the closure thingy. So I, I need to make a uh, punch a hole here. And I'll probably add a um, hole reinforcer on it. Yeah? I'll oh, probably. And also in the corner here, I actually want to, to add a page number. Now I'm not going to number them one, two, three. I'm going to number them randomly because that's what I like. That's what I like. But that more of that later. Let's first get some uh, lovely labels out. Um... I had these, yeah, these botanical ones. And these are the sort of sepia colored ones. That will do lovely. But I also have some colored ones. Like these. Yeah. And I think I want to have add some, some here and there. And then also a this. Just some random ones to sort of connect them to one another. I think I might want to add something here on its side. See, like so. Oh yeah, that looks lovely. And then I'll probably add a page number, I think, here. Yeah. And for this, I'll most likely use the cardstock that I've used here. And then maybe with a cutoff from the dictionary page to make sort of a my own small label with a number on it here on the bottom. Make any sense? Yeah, I think so. Do we need a little something there? I have loads of, of labels. Now use any kind of labels you want, lobbies. No, that's too big. Smaller one. Do not attach. Well, I will not attach. I promise. 
Oh, that's cute. It says stock number. Yeah? Okay. Inking. I need inking. Um, I'm going to go afraid burlap, uh, burlap on everything. This is already inked. There we go. Yes, and stock number. I'm losing the number. The piece that says number. No, you're not. <laughs> I'm actually not losing the number. No, I'll probably use that somewhere else. Okay. Shall we start gluing? We shall. Do I need tweezers? If I can find them. Which I don't. So, no tweezers today. They are somewhere, but... Oh yes, I see them. I see them. So there we go. Some lovely decorating. I'm using uh, the words <laughs> as a sort of a guideline where I wanted to put it. And I did it wrong. It needs to be higher. There you go. Now, if art was still art, I wouldn't be able to do this. No. Higher? Still, It's still letting me put it higher. And that's quite all right. Uh, are we? Yes, we're just doing this. Oh, that's upside down. <laughs> were you screaming? You probably were screaming. You were like... Also, guys, keep in mind that I'm going to round corners. So I do not actually want to put anything in the actual corner. Okay, so this was going to go here with this here. Right? Yeah. Why do you have your tweezers out? I don't know. In case I want tweezers. And there we go. It's going to go here. Not put it in the corner because we're going to round that. And then this was going to go... I want to put it over it. Oh yeah, let's. Oh yeah, I'm gonna put it over it. So here's what I'll do guys, because I need to make eight of them. Um, I'm going to show you this one, how I glue it down. And the other ones I am going to decorate, but the gluing down I will do off camera because that'll take a while. What is up and what is down? Oh, this is apparently. Up. I'm gonna put it a little bit over there. Yes. And then this was gonna go here, right? Actually, this was sort of supposed to touch, but that didn't happen, did it? Now, no. No, it did not. But still, lovely. Still lovely. Yeah? They're very heavy now, guys. They are very heavy. But that was the plan. Now, let's sort of figure out what we're going to put on all the other ones. Next one, let's see. Oh, this is going to go in the corner. Of course, I've chosen this one here. Um, spec I have specimen label. Or written, no. Specimen labels. That looks really cool, but I need more color. This does have color. Can we sort of put it? No, that's a bit too much. That's a bit much. Something else that is green. Yeah, we can do this. Oh, I have this number left. Can we put that? Well, there's going to be a number either here or here. So I'll probably no. Hmm. 
like so. Yeah, I think I'm gonna put the numbers here. Yeah, on the bottom because it will clip here and I'm gonna put the numbers here. Yeah? Yes, let me glue it down. Next one, this with the berries. So I've chosen these sort of seed pots here. So I'm just gonna go here and here. Now, um, let's, let's add a color. We want to do red. Oh, well, that'll look nice. But I want to add more red then. Um, something here. Yeah, and then a label there. Do we need more? No. No. I'm going to keep this as is. Yes, and then the number here. Cool. Next one. Let's see. I really like to use one of those somewhere. Can we sort of move it in here? Yeah, I think we can. So we have a colored one and then... Field notes. Field notes. Oh, red. Oh, like so. Yes. Then we want another sort of something there. Or numbers. No, we're going to put numbers here. No more numbers, love. No more numbers. No more numbers. What else do we have? These are rather big. Need something small. Something round. Mm. Way too big. Oh, what is this? For private use. Okay. Okay, I'm going to use it private. I am, however, going to put it here because rounded corners, rounded corners. Let's put this here. Yeah? Yeah, cool. Next one. This one. Isn't she pretty? Oh, such a pretty flower. Such a pretty flower. Or who's a pretty flower then? <laughs> Uh, let's see, what are we going to add to this? Do you want to have it half of the page? Will that work with, let's say this, for example, this one? It's going to be a number there, love. Oh, yeah. Forgot. Maybe a bit higher. Do we have a small one? Yes, this one. That will go sort of off the page. Or, oh, this one. Yes, for sure. Now we need something there. Another red one. Maybe like so. Then the image is gone. Well, let's use another one. Yes. Let's use this one. And this one. And this. Yeah. Now, guys, what I did with the other ones, these are sort of square and then they have the, the corners on here. I always snip those because I cannot stand it. <laughs> so I'm going to snip them. Yeah? Okay. Next one. This one. Which has one of my favorite flowers on here. I have no clue what the English word is. In Dutch is ranonkel. It's like um, a spring flower. Ranonkel. There we go. Oh, I'm putting it on. <laughs> well, I'm putting it on. Yeah, well, put this on. I'm going to put this one on as well. Now, we need... Um, this also sort of looks like an uncle. It doesn't, really doesn't. I'm thinking this one. That's very blue. Also have these. Look 
looks like this purple flower. Does it look nice? I want to have the blue one on. I'm sorry, I just want to have the blue one on. I'm going to have blue one on here. And then I need something, something blue, small. Oh, I have lots of small blue things. This one here and one on the top. Ooh, look at the tiny pretty one. Yes, my nails. I cannot pick anything up. Yeah. Can we have this? No, that's it is too small even. Or just the numbers. Yes. And then the other number here. Cool. Yeah. I have two left. Let's do them simultaneously. There's lots of yellow in here. So I was thinking this one with the yellow. Yes. And then it needs something that says specimen. Yeah. And something here. Something there. Oh, well. That, do you want to do two colored ones? Let's be daring. No love number here. <laughs> no two colored ones. There we go. A smaller one here. Yes. Do we want to? This is upside down. No. Yes. Okay. So this one. And then this one with the pink. I don't have anything in pink, guys. Oh, well, I could do the this one with a little bit of purplish flowers. Let's see, sort of down here in this corner. Oh yeah. That is pretty cool. Mm -hmm. already used this one on one of them but that's okay this one here and then a taller one Ooh. natural history collection yes and then green yes they're done they're pretty i'm gonna show you guys now before i round corners i'm going to punch holes and i'm going to use this tool um, but I need them all to be in the same spot. So what am I doing? I'm just going to line it up, push it all the way to this edge. Yes. And then line it up with, uh, well, the tool. Yeah. So it's there. Now, um, if you don't have this, maybe have a double perforator. You can sort of line it up. Or if you're using this one, you can sort of, um, Measure it here, yes. Have this sort of a, as a template. You can move this up or down. And then sort of try to measure it out. I think this tool works best. So all of them will be in the exact same spot. See? Doesn't need to be exact, exact lobbies. But, you know, punch holes in corners. All on the same spot. Now, maybe you're like, my image is here. Then punch a hole here. Or you could even do it on the on the bottom corner, guys. No worries. All my holes are punched. I am going to put on hole reinforcers, guys. These are um, ones that I already made. Um, they're all the same, but different colors. That's that's okay. I'm going to do them on the back, um, back and front. I was thinking. Just both sides. Yes, I'm going to do... On both of them. Now, um, while I'm doing one, guys, I was thinking to make sort of a cover on them. Because um, the examples I have, the inspiration ones, also have sort of a cover on them. From sort of a plasticky, something plastic. I'm just going to alter with the, the colors, guys. They don't need to be all the same color. And I have no clue uh, if you're going to see any of them, really. So I was thinking about sort of a cover. And that's what I'm doing. I'm going to make a cover. Come on, be on there. 
I'm going to make a cover. So I made two more of these, just uh, plain ones. Yeah, so I did not decorate them. And also in the same size, three by six, I cut out two pieces of acetate. Also punched in a hole. So I want to have this as a cover. It's going to be blank. But what am I doing? On the acetate, I want to do um, uh, something with rub-ons. Yeah, rub-ons. And maybe, maybe just a label um, in the back on here. But I am going to make um, covers. But first, I'm going to put it on the hole reinforcers on all the small holes that I made. All of them are on. Front, back, yes. Round corners. I'm going to go with the biggest setting. Hopefully it will work because... Very heavy paper now, especially if there is two corner rounders on them. Oh, that wasn't smart. That wasn't smart. Hmm. Hmm. Not smart. However, I'm going to not round this corner. Yeah, I'm just going to round that corner. It's going to look smart. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Going to keep this as is. Because it just didn't fit anymore. There's too much on here. Will this fit? Well, it should. It should. Yeah. So I'm going to round corners. Now, hopefully, guys, you're not crafting along with me. You're just watching how I'm going to do this. Um, round corners before you put on hole reinforcers. Great tip, yeah? Because um, it didn't work for me anymore. I just left this straight, which also looks cool. Looks cool. And what the, what's next? Then I'm going to do um, inking all around it. Like so. Now I will also do this. Um, I'm not going to do it on the back. No. Just on the front, guys. Yeah. And I will also do this on the blank ones that we're going to use as covers. Of course, I'm not going to ink the acetate ones. Yeah, so rounding corners, inking. Oh, I think I'm going to love this one. Look at how fat it has become. Yes, remember when we started this, I was like, oh, that's sad. <laughs> well, it's no longer sad. No, it's a chunky one. It's just, it, you can use it as a journal, guys, believe me. Now, um, you really don't need the acetate covers, guys. No, so if you don't have any to acetate, or if you, you can have it like so, if you want to. I just want to make this... Um, uh, look pretty with a protective cover so i am going to do something on this acetate now i've taken out of course 49 and market because i have those this is from the uh, color swatch grove uh, collection and i'm going to have uh, a butterfly on there as well yeah so here's what i'm gonna do i'm just gonna make sort of a background collage thingy I am cutting this out a little bit over here, there. Putting this in the background. Now I've tried uh, this acetate and rub-ons. Um, it has a smooth side because you can print on this. These are overhead projector sheets and sort of a rougher side. So I'm going to use the rougher side and have this one on. And then I'm um, thinking this pretty flower here. I'm going to layer them. Yes, one on top of each other. So yeah, and this one is going to go on top of it. There you go. And this one. And this one. Probably a butterfly somewhere. Big one? No, smaller one. I don't like these butterflies. I like my butterflies from the top, not from the side. But hey, that's just me. I'm going to take the bottom corner one. Why not? Yeah. So I'm going to sort of layer this. And I'll probably add um, like a label on here. But let's first see how this will turn out. 
it already looks so amazing. I love it so much. I'm going to show you guys. But first, I wanted to do some page numbers. Now, instead of page numbers, I decided to put on dates. So this is actually a stamp from, uh, of course, Eccentric. Yes, my Eccentric set. And these are for, for library cards or something like it. So um, I've already stamped one of them and then cut them out. And I'm going to do another one. Um, because there are lines in between them. Let's see. Does this fit? Of course it does, love. Just, you know, stamp it on. Yes. Because there are lines above and, you know, in between them, I really wanted to have the line above and underneath the date. So I could not use all of them. However, I can now because I stamped it twice. So see, I already used July 9th. Now I'm going to go at August 8th. So I'm, first I'm going to cut this. There we go. Yep. Let's start from the bottom. I already have May 28th. So I don't need that one. I'm going to cut off a little bit below that line. And now I want April 15th. I'm hoping I have enough. I have June. Also have January. I'm going to do February. So below that line and above it. Yes. Uh, August. I was saying August, right? And what else did I have? Hmm. Well, August. How many do I have now? I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I want them all to be different, of course. And um, November. November 10th. There you go. Yes. I have eight now. I have eight. What am I going to do? I uh, Am I going to ink it? No, it's already on old paper. I'm just going to glue it on, you know, the pieces that we have left. And then cut it out. Yeah. So I have a couple of these, a couple of these. Let's make some numbers. I have all my lovely dates. as numbers on them. Now let's put them on in no particular order. I'm just going to start somewhere. I did ink um, a little bit all around the sort of green. I'm just going to put them, you know, in a corner. Like so, for the finishing touch, which is fantastic. Yes, next. October 18th. Oh, these nails, guys. <laughs> Yes. Just looks great. I'm really sorry during this uh, project that I did so much off camera, but I already knew I need to do eight of them. So it's going to be a lot, be a lot of work. But you know, you get it, right? You get it. Great. So. We do the other ones as well. And then we're going to sort of bind them together. So all the lovely dates are on. I, there's no particular order, guys. The only order is this is the front cover, the acetate one. And this one is the cover underneath. I, I did add the splatter stamp on the inside and on the outside. Look at all the numbers. I thought it was just lovely. And I put a label here and here. Yes. And then all the other ones in no particular order. Do have them all with the with the decorated side on the top, right? And then this one again, and I just put another label here. And where's the acetate? The acetate is here. Just another lovely rub on. Yes, so everything is in order. I actually really like that we left this corner by accident, <laughs> just straight. Just gives it a much nicer look. Now, um, you can go with... I can if not even go with this because that it was way too small. You can put in a ring if you have something like it. You could put in this if you have something like it. You could put in this, yeah, if you have something like it. Or use a brad. Now, I have these brads with very, very long legs. That'll fit perfectly on here. So, I'm just going to put it through all of them. Does that work? Yes, it does. 
go on. See, it sticks out for a little bit. And I'm then going to fold them over. I'm not going to press too tight, however, uh, because I want there to be a lot of room for moving it about. There you go. And there you go. Is that loose enough? Yes. Oh, it looks lovely. Oh, I like it. Oh, yes, I like it a lot. I like it a lot. It doesn't even need a closure, guys. No, because it's all stuck together. Okay, I think that's it. Let's do the flip through. Now, most likely this project has been done before, but I honestly have never seen it. So I'm just going to call it my own, my own sort of invention. Uh, normally what I do is a flippy floppy journal thingy. This is actually a twisty journal. It twists, yeah? Because if you want to look at it, you need to twist it. So I'm going to start with the acetate cover. You don't need to have acetate cover, guys. No, if you don't have anything like this, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. I just wanted to protect it from, I don't know, coffee or, or tea or whatever. You. So you just twist it. You can twist it like this or like this, whatever you want. Um, I put on some labels, some splattering. This is just a sort of cover page, yeah? So you just twist it. And then you see the lovely cards that we made. Isn't that cute? With all the uh, dates on them. It turned out completely different than what I imagined. But still really, really lovely. Yeah. Just all the lovely cards. And it does twist uh, really nice because... Um, well, I put on all the hole reinforcers. You don't see them anymore. But because there are hole reinforcers on, it creates a little bit sort of a room between the pages. So they don't really get stuck together. I need some glue here. <laughs> Drop a glue. There you go. That was way too much. Yeah, probably my favorite page. I love this one. Very sort of, you know, calm. A calm page. Not like this one. There's a lot going on here. I really like them. Isn't she pretty? It's such a pretty flower. Don't even know what sort of flower it is. Yeah, and then this one. I really love this label as well. Just cool. I just sort of thought about it. You could even, if you have a laminator, laminate all the pages. Yeah, that'd be cool. But then you cannot write on them anymore. So no laminating. Because, guys, you can write on them. Yes, on the backs. Let me show you. I'm going to push through them. There you go. And then this one. And then you get to the back one. I did not add any labels. You could add a label if you want to. Just some splattering. Flip it over. Yes. So here's the brad. It looks fine. It looks just fine. I did also do, did some um, rub-ons on the, on the back. Love this page. Yeah. Put on a label here. And then you have all the blank uh, spots, guys. Now, uh, do some journaling on there or whatever you like. Because there's a little bit of room in between all the all the um, pages because of the hole reinforcers. You can even um, maybe glue on a pocket if you want to. If you want to. Yeah, I don't want to because it's already really, really pretty. Just a quick side note, guys. Because in the beginning I gave you some options for the, let's call it a binding system. Now this, this and this will work. But it won't be a flippy journal. Uh, a twisty journal. That will be a flippy journal. So you can... Flip them up, basically, because that's been done before. So this will actually work best. Now, if you don't have a long-legged bread, you could use a shorter one, a normal one, but then it will fit less pages. So I've been thinking about uh, an alternative. Now, I only have two very big buttons on my desk, but just pretend that these are small buttons. You need two small buttons with two holes in them. Yes, one on the front, one in the back, and then you... Sew through them, back and forth, back and forth. It will be fiddly, I know. Use a big needle, back and forth, back and forth. Um, and then a lovely bow um, on the top or something like it. Now, uh, for the thread, you need heavy thread like cotton or nylon or maybe even uh, the wax thread that we use for, for binding. Yeah, so that's sort of an alternative if you don't have long-legged breads. 
So that's it for today, guys. I really enjoyed myself. Hope you liked it. It was an adventure slash experiment and it turned out fantastic. You can make this in all sizes, guys. Make them smaller, bigger, rectangles, circles, triangles, whatever you want in any, any style. Now, I'll be back again this Wednesday with another project. No clue what. Let's see what I can come up with. Hoping to see you then. Until Wednesday. Bye, guys.